Thanks everybody for joining. So Julian is live from Breakpoint in Lisbon. How's how's the conference going, man? Yeah, so far so good. Pretty well organized, I would say, and quite a big crew of, of many different interesting projects. So uh, it's pretty cool. Awesome, man. So I, you know, it's it's kind of a good opportunity for us to talk about some of the things we've got coming up in terms of our multi-chain future. Encourage everybody to jump onto our Discord and ask away, fire away. We're going to kind of keep it related to uh, multi-chain, but, you know, if you have other questions, please feel free to ask. So, yeah, I mean, obviously, maybe, JB, do you want to talk a little bit about where we're at in terms of our multi-chain strategy and what we've got coming up in the pipeline? Yeah, for sure. So this ecosystem of multi-chains, it's, it's, it's going pretty fast, especially because of all these different incentives. Uh, programs that each of those uh, networks are, are, are pushing into uh, the DeFi space. Uh, so a lot of different projects are currently uh, incentivized to build on top of those different uh, those different projects. So what we're trying to do in Stake DAO, well, we, we start a couple months ago by integrating Polygon and, and Binance. And then lately we've been integrating Avalanche, uh, especially with the arbitrage uh, strategy. So uh, what we're doing currently is like kind of arbitrage on the top of Avalanche because of um, some different aspects of the chain that make uh, the profits pretty uh, interesting. So we integrate this, uh, this strategy on Avalanche. And now we also looking, we also like been working on Harmony, uh, Arbitron. Uh, so what we're trying to do in terms of uh, cross layers is to provide the best strategy for each of those networks. So it's not necessarily provide all the same strategies for all those different networks, like some people will do. Uh, for us, it's more about, okay, if a chain, for example, Avalanche or Solana, in terms of transaction speed or block propagation and also uh, gas cost, if they are uh, way better than another chain, then we'll probably do like some market maker or arbitrage or bots that will try to create some profits and for example, if you stay on mainnet, uh, maybe the market is more interesting for landing market, auto market makers such as Ave and Curve. So we'll build a strategy that will be more like conservative and we'll be able to stack into the different strategy. So what we're trying to do is trying to be cross layers. And this takes time because you need to deploy on, uh, across those different networks. So you have a different stack, different uh, way of interacting with the chains. So for example, uh, people might not understand, but um, if you have a chain that is being deployed and you don't have Etherscan, it can really slow down the process of deployment. Uh, so even like a small bit that uh, we are all used of that is not deployed on another chain, then it, it can be very difficult. So that's what we're trying to do. And then the more we go cross chain, then we more we need to expand the team. So it's also like a lot of um, uh, requires a lot of resources and, and time. So it's quite time consuming. So that's what we need to focus and try to for each of those networks, try to adapt uh, a specific project. And I think that's what we've been doing. So, and so far it's pretty uh, successful. Uh, so, and then after that, the plan will be integrating on top of those different blockchain, kind of like what I call layer three, but this is something we can talk later. For sure. And something that's kind of interesting right now, it's, it's pretty competitive, like in terms of the, the sentiment between some of these kind of more scalable blockchains, you know, Avalanche and Solana and, like, what's the mood like at the conference and how do you think we, Stakedow, can kind of, like, help, uh, I guess, unite some of these L2s? Yeah, it's completely the um, – and I think the the, um, the message was uh, very clear from the beginning is in this ecosystem, Stakedow, or uh, the meme of the herd and all the people that are working in the DAO, and all the people that are helping on top of the DAO, we're really like more like blockchain agnostic. And what we're trying to do is like be friends. And as long as the people that we're working with, or as long as the people that we want to work with are sharing the same values and the same vision as us, basically uh, our common competitor is more traditional finance. So what we're trying to do is like work with uh, everyone in the ecosystem and build with everyone. So uh, in terms of stake down, what's is really different from, it's a decentralized exchange in the sense that we try to provide a way to access crypto, a way to like sell, uh, participate in those different strategies. We have the best API across all the different strategies that we provide. We have the best API on the options market. 
And also we uh, have built the first ever NFT gamification for APY on, on the DeFi space. And, and what we're trying to do is for all those different blockchains that are building in this ecosystem, if they have a strong technology and we believe the team is, is good and also the, the traction and the, 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 the ecosystem, then we want to bring them on board. And as a user, what you want to experience when you go to the stake DAO, you not necessarily want to see that you are on a specific chain, but more that you are using a specific product. And I think that that's the, 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 the thing that we're trying to achieve, but it's very difficult because if you use a uh, centralized exchange such as Binance or FTX or other great products that you have but are centralized solution, meaning that they're not trustless and you don't have access to your to your wallets like directly, they, they, they control your keys. Those products, those uh, companies, they have they can leverage the technology, they can leverage the stack uh, and go faster on the market because they actually control the wallets of their users. So as as a user of using those platforms, it's completely. Uh, uh, agnostic. I mean, you don't actually see that you are using a specific technology or another one. And what we want to achieve in StackDAO is exactly the same. We want to provide products to users, but without them to need, to need to understand that they have to switch to a specific RPC, they have to have a specific wallet, or they need to have some technological understanding of the ecosystem to be able to participate in those different products. And this is what we're trying to focus on. It's quite difficult because we need to jump across different blockchains. We need to potentially use bridges. And we also need to ask uh, to actually um, obfuscate the concept of wallets. Uh, so it's a challenge. But so far, I think we have the best UI, UX or UI, UX or UI in the ecosystem. It's not perfect. I'm sure like a lot of uh, retail users are experiencing some, some issues on the, on, the, on the project, but we're trying to do our best. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you've been having some kind of interesting conversations with, with people at the conference about Solana. You know, are there any things that you think Solana could be like uniquely suited to for, for us to use? Yeah, I mean, I'm not so sure. I mean, I'm a big fan of NFTs. We have built, uh, we also like looking into like kind of a metaverse and we, we've been building like a different concept on the NFTs. For example, we, the first one to build a strategy that is only accessible for certain types of NFTs. So three types like common, rare and unique. And depending on the NFT that you have access to, you can basically stake a maximum amount of uh, capital. And then this, this gives you fractional ownership of the uh, future profits. Uh, so this kind of things that we're really deep in those uh, different DeFi, uh, DeFi products. We're not necessarily just, uh, un- like, we build on top of existing technology, but we also build our own kind of, like, protocols or technology. And in Solana ecosystem, there was a lot of hype in the NFT thing. But for me, because of the intrinsic value of the, 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 the underlying concept of Solana, is the concept of uh, computing power, meaning that you can actually speed up transactions quite fast. Even if, like, you can think of, 50% of the transaction or 50% of the network is being used to validate the network. But still, as long as you increase the, 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 the computing power, you can increase the number of transactions. So as I see, a Solana for us is more like on the quantitative algorithmic trading concept. So more like arbitrage market maker. But like the thing that we did on, 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 on Avalanche is also something that we can replicate and do on Solana. So I see for us more like Solana. I see Solana as more like a, a pretty complex and advanced DeFi, traditional DeFi, uh, traditional financial product, but it's attached and we can do like those very high frequency trading, those very advanced that requires uh, speed in the traditional finance, but maybe can be adopted very quickly in the Solana space. That's what I'm more focused on, but, and also like in terms of gaming, I mean, the gaming industry, well, everything that requires quite fast uh, speed. I don't think like NFT printing NFT requires speed. It requires cheap mint, uh, minting process, so people being able to transfer them, people being able to buy them and sell them, that's for sure. But if it's just this, you don't need Solana for it. Uh, Solana is more like for uh, pretty complex um, financial products. You know, from an end user perspective, like obviously a lot of DeFi products these days, you know, the UX has kind of been designed around low low throughput applications. So like, say say we get things going on Solana, maybe Avalanche, some of these other chains. What what, what do you think users are going to be able to do on StakeDAO? Yeah, so what we're trying to do is first provide them tools or uh, products that will provide them like either capital optimizations, so like strategy that we can, uh, like for example, landing capital and we can 
rebalance the capital across different products. So for example, you stake into a strategy and this strategy on the, uh, behind the thing is basically allocating this capital to the projects or to the DeFi project on Solana that have the best return. Uh, so doing so, because it's cheap, it's, it's fast, you can do it like more, more, more often. Like uh, you can do it like multiple times a day. So what I see is like in this kind of different chain where cost of rebalancing or cost of doing transactions and another transaction you can do is so cheap. I think that will be like a lot of chaos, uh, meaning that the TVL and the liquidity across those different projects will dramatically or rapidly change over uh, not a week or weekly or monthly basis, but like per day. Uh, so you will, like for example, if you look at Mainnet, you can see like Ave and Curve competing now, like the competing on a weekly basis for the TVL leader leadership. But I think in those different chains, because it goes super fast, project like Stake DAO, that building strategy that will be balanced on course these different products will make the TVL of those different projects change dramatically. So this is the first thing, and then we also like can power uh, what we have in terms of a layer of gamification on top of the platform. For example, either on the NFTs that you can stake across the different strategies or like participating in the options or the futures of the referral program. Those different things can actually also be implemented in Solana. Uh, but And then the third point, what we really focus on, and I think that will be our priority in the next couple of months, especially for Solana, we have currently, uh, vi- we're currently validating a, uh, something like 100 40 or 150 million US dollars of worth of Solana of Sol. So what the plan for that is to use our own validator and being able to push some DeFi uh, trading products. So the, the one that we deployed on Avalanche, the arbitrage strategy, uh, will be doing the same on Solana network. Amazing. And having all of these other chains at our fingertips, we're getting some, we're getting some interesting questions coming in from the community now. And, and one of them is when will SCT staking be available on other chains? I mean, obviously, we already have it um, to some degree on Polygon, but as we add more chains, is this something we're looking at? Yeah, yeah. So we deployed on Avalanche and deployed now we're deploying as well like strategies on Harmony. So we'll have like Harmony, Solana, Polkadot, Avalanche, all those different networks. And with those different strategies, what we want to have is where people will be able to stake those SDT on the other chain and being able to receive a fractional ownership of all the different performance fees that we're doing across the entire DAO. And also being able to not necessarily like, you don't want to bridge an NFT or you don't want to bridge an, an SDT uh, to participate in those different products cross chains. So what you want to have is just buy uh, SDT on the chain directly or have access to those new types of NFTs on the chain. For example, we're releasing NFTs for the Avalanche chain. This is something that we've been working on. So like those different products that we have on mainnet, we want to replicate them on uh, those different chains, but not necessarily for the same products that we have on mainnet. Because as I explained, in those products, I believe we don't need to deploy the exact same. What we want to provide to the user is the best products across all the different uh, different chains. So it's not necessarily the same products. As long as you can find later on a good way of bridging assets without actually knowing that you need to bridge assets. And what you can do is like in traditional finance, you can you don't actually need to bridge assets. What you can do, you can do like market maker. You actually buy, you have enough liquidity on both chain. And you, you as a user that want to enter the other chain, you just ask him to send those token to one way and then we distribute the other way. It's like kind of like, uh, like mirroring the, the, the liquidity on one side to another side. So like from the end user point of view, we would have some sort of bridge capability, a staked out bridge. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah, that's something we've been working on. Like internal solutions of bridging are also like integrating some solutions that we believe uh, are pretty advanced and, and for us makes a lot of sense to, to use. But uh, I think the space is what I call uh, layer three. And I think the space like this year will be the year of, of layer three, meaning that the concept of using those different blockchain will come naturally and people won't necessarily need to understand that they are on a specific chain and they will be able to interact with different technology and the UI will do the rest. They will like either bridge the asset, but the user won't actually understand or won't need to see that those assets are being bridged. So that's why like multiple different DeFi projects will need to either build those different bridges mechanism or will need to integrate some existing solution. And I believe the existing solutions, not existing solutions, but 
people that are entirely focused on that job will actually win the race because bridging solution is pretty uh, pretty complex and requires a lot of energy and, and also like uh, need to make sure you don't get wrecked. So people will be actually using them. And, um, you know, I, I think maybe this might be an interesting question for you personally, since you've been around in the Ethereum community for quite a while. Like, what's your view of, like, ETH's, ETH's role in all of this? Yeah, I think uh, there was a question yesterday about will Solana flee Ethereum? And obviously, it's like kind of like Solana OGs uh, at the conference. I think I, I would say that, Solana, in order to win, or other blockchain, in order to win, they don't actually need to flip Ethereum. And I think that would be pretty scary if this happens. I don't want to say that. I'm, I mean, I've been in the Solana ecosystem for like the, from the beginning and, and Polkadot and Cosmos and all those different chains. But I think like I see because of the interesting value of Ethereum being built right after Bitcoin and the first kind of like internet money and using smart contracts. I think like the entire space will grow, but Ethereum if Ethereum grows like faster than the other one, or at least at the same speed, it will be beneficial for the entire ecosystem. And I think like all those different blockchains can coexist and can live together. They don't need to be uh, competition between each other because it's kind of like a technology that can, each of those networks, each of those, those blockchains will have a different use case. Like internal, like for example, one will need to have more like privacy oriented solutions. One will have to be focused on speed. One will need to be focused on cost. And all the different things. So at the end of the day, if you build a layer three and you don't actually see uh, what's happening behind the scene, then it's great for everyone and everyone wins. So I believe that the ecosystem, I think the, the people from Ethereum, except like some maximalists or people that join after the 2017 ICO boom that become maximalists, I think this is how you can actually kill your own uh, your own project or your own family or your own like ecosystem. That's what happened to Bitcoin. That's probably why Bitcoin has then been, hasn't been innovating so, so much like over the past 10 years. It's because like a lot of people that were there early stage for the vision of anarchy. So like not like just providing value to the society that they hand up with a lot of money and then they gave up uh, the vision. And they just stick on the economical aspect of this uh, blockchain thing. So what I believe is like we need to all be friends between each other in a, in a blockchain, in a, in a protocol scene. So it's not only like Solana, Ethereum, Parkadot, Avalanche, uh, Cosmos and all the things that need to be friends, but also like DeFi projects. I don't really understand like the, the hate of what some people are, are having between each other. Uh, I mean, to a certain extent. Uh, but I think what we're trying to do is like compete with the traditional finance. So, agreed. Yeah, I mean it's it's an important function of of at least what we're trying to do. I think at Stake DAO is to bring all of these chains into one place and and also bringing these projects together. I think it's a really important part of it. I think you know just kind of to wrap things up and let you get back to the to the conference. You know, what are some of the chains that we're looking at in addition to Solana and a couple of other ones that we've mentioned already? Yeah, we're looking at Harmony, we're looking at Polkadot, we also been working uh, on, on Celo, also like Cosmos, so we're validating across all the different blockchains. So this is the step, like we're validating across all the different blockchains, we build different strategies on top of it, and then we uh, build DeFi products uh, uh, that are using those different uh, different blockchains. And we also like have Tezos. I believe Tezos technology is pretty great. The, the other thing is like probably more like on a, on a foundation or like a, more like a legal aspect of the, the thing. But yeah, I think we currently getting involved. We have uh, Polygon, obviously, and we have we have other 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 ones that for now are not public. Uh, I mean, not public uh, for our, us to get involved in it. So I don't really want to mention them. But yeah, it's uh, it's quite a lot. So getting involved in all those different things, we need to be able to hire more people, scale, and also be focused on the products rather than trying to provide everything uh, in one place. Well said, man. Well said. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. For, uh, for taking the time out of the, the conference, man. Guys, if you haven't given us a follow on, on Twitter, please do so. Jump on our Discord. You know, we have full-time mods who are always there to answer questions. We're always open for collaboration. So so just reach out to anyone. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. We have a lot going on in the background. So yeah, awesome, guys. Well, uh, enjoy the rest of Breakpoint, Julian. Yeah, no, thank you, guys. And uh, enjoy and I hope it was useful. And uh, if you are in uh, Salt Kong, please send me a message on Twitter or, or Telegram and I'll be more happy to, to have a, a drink, a cup of coffee with you guys. 
See you. Awesome, guys. Take care.